I will continue uh, discussing the exponential law, it is a very important one and anyway there are so many aspects that uh, there may be some repetition also, but does not matter. So, uh, we said that um, uh, for example, as I have been giving the example of a fuse, which does not uh, show the warehouse uh, wearing house effect, uh, wearing out uh, effect and um, uh, similarly a jeweled bearing, you know you have them in watches. So, there is no uh, wearing out effect on, uh, on such components uh, and they are good uh, as good as new while they are functioning, right. So, it does not matter how long they have been functioning, they are as good as new. And um, uh, if, if a fuse has not burnt out, it is like a new one, uh, jeweled bearing does not wear out, ok. So, this is uh, again and again I am trying to give you examples of uh, components which for which and therefore, for such components uh, the expo exponential law is appropriate and is supported by empirical evidence. Okay. That means, when you have collected data for such components, how long it takes for them to fail and so on. So, then uh, and then fitting the uh, curve to the data, it turns out that exponential law is an appropriate one for such components. Okay. So, another way of saying that there is no wearing out effect is as follows. Consider the conditional probability that capital T the lifetime lies between T and T plus delta T, given that capital T is greater than T. Right. Now, the intersection of these two events is simply this, right? because here also T is greater than T and it is less than T plus delta T. So, therefore, the intersection of these two events is this. So, then the conditional probability can be written as pro pro probability of the intersection of the two events divided by probability that T is greater than T. Right. Now, this you can see immediately is the probability T less than or equal to T plus delta T minus probability T less than or equal to T. So, this event right. and since this is 1 minus e raise to minus alpha uh, T plus delta T minus of 1 minus e raise to minus alpha T. Right. So, the 1 1 cancels out and you will be left with e raise to minus alpha t minus e raise to minus alpha of t plus delta t divided by uh, this probability which is e raise to minus alpha t. This of course, I am showing you for the exponential law. Uh, so, therefore, this is 1 minus e raise to minus alpha delta t which is nothing but the probability that uh, t lies between 0 and delta t. So, this tells you that this probability is independent. So, this conditional probability is independent of t, depends only on delta t, that is depends only on the length of the uh, interval that you are considering. That means, you want to consider. So, that means, uh, uh, here from t to t plus delta t. So, the length of the interval is delta t. So, this probability, this conditional probability is independent of t and depends only on uh, delta t. Right. So, therefore, this is another way of saying that it is memory less or it, uh, the wearing out effect is not there. That means, it is not matter, it does not matter for how long the system has already been working, uh, but now when you want to look at the probability that it will be working in the interval t to t, that means it fails before t plus delta t, then that is dependent only on delta t. So, this is the whole idea, right. And uh, so, we have seen that there are many situations where this is a very appropriate law. Now, um, see this want to make a note here that even though um, this will also this probability will also if you say t less than or equal to capital T less than or equal to t plus delta t this will also come out to be the same as this one right. But uh, since we are considering the conditional probability that t is greater than capital T. So, therefore, we have to consider uh, this event right and not this event. So, sometimes inadvertently maybe one can uh, I may have written it like this, but the when you are looking at this conditional uh, probability, then it has to be t strictly less than capital T and here it is less than or equal to t plus delta t. So, that would be the right uh, way to write the event and the, even though because of the continuous case the two probabilities may come out to be the same this is the important part. So, thus as long as the component is working it is as good as new. Now, in, triple in this equation, uh, suppose uh, I expand the right hand side. So, expansion for e raise to 
minus alpha delta t, right. So, all of you should be familiar uh, that much calculus everybody has done. So, you uh, can write down the expansion for e raise to minus alpha delta t, which will be 1 minus alpha delta t plus uh, sorry this should have been 2 factorial and so on powers of uh, delta t. Okay. And then uh, when you open up the brackets, uh, 1 cancels out and then will be have you have the alpha delta t plus higher power terms containing powers of uh, uh, terms like delta t square, delta t cube and so on. Fine. Uh, now, when uh, so delta, is small, delta t is small, we can just ignore these terms and therefore, uh, for small delta t, probability of failure in time delta t is proportional to alpha delta t. Okay. So, this is what again just reiterating what we have been saying. So, now in fact, uh, we have given it a better expression from here. This is a more uh, uh, you can immediately conclude uh, quite a few things from here. So, that means, in a small interval no matter where that time interval is length delta t is uh, the probability of a failure in that time period is proportional to uh, time period itself delta t. Okay. Now, this is uh, if you again uh, see I am saying the same thing again which I said. So, this is nothing but your uh, Poisson process. Uh, this is this is the one of the basic assumptions of a Poisson process. In fact, um, uh, what you can say now here is that suppose you have a um, electronic device and you have lot of components which which have the same uh, which follow the same uh, um, exponential failure law and uh, uh, they have the identical distribution that is uh, uh, the same the same parameter lambda let's say right and then uh, you are uh, and of course the components behave independently so uh, that uh, that condition also for a poisson process is satisfied that is the uh, you know uh, arrivals are independent and so here uh, the uh, components will behave independently so their failures will also be independent of each other so with, uh, that assumption plus the assumption that within a, in a small interval uh, the probability of a failure is proportional to alpha delta t okay so then in that case with those two assumptions uh, you can then say that if you are considering a let's say time period 0 comma t then the number of uh, failures uh, within this time interval will follow a poisson process so you can see that the arrival and the inter, inter arrival times that we will talk in detail later on uh, so the inter arrival times and the arrival patterns so inter arrival times would be uh, exponential and the uh, arrival uh, patterns would be poisson and so on so we'll continue with that discussion now um, so, now because again we uh, want to say this thing now that since the uh, for the exponential failure law the failure behavior of an item depends only on the length of the time period being considered and not on its past history. right? So, therefore, and for the non exponential just like we have so far considered uh, the normal uh, failure law. So, for non exponential failure laws the past does matter it does matter because when you are under uh, you know stress then the wearing out effect is there and so it depends on how long uh, the stress has been and so on so for a non exponential failure laws the past does matter so therefore it's important to understand that when you talk of the time t life time you know life length so for the exponential failure law t will denote the time in service up to failure right because it doesn't matter when you start counting it is if the if the component is functioning then you start counting the time from then so up to failure t will denote the time it doesn't matter when you start counting it right but for other for non exponential components t will denote the total life length up to failure so you started functioning from whatever time you 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 count your time from that and so capital t will in that case the normal the the random variable will be will denote the total life length up to failure so, total means that you whenever you start service or whenever you start using the item, uh, then you start counting your time from here. Whereas, here it, it does not matter, you start counting from any point and then up to failure. So, the life length will denote that. So, t will denote that time period. So, 
So, it is important to understand these two um, the differences between you know how you count the time for exponential failure law and for a non exponential failure law. Let us look at the various graphs connected with the exponential failure law. So, this is a familiar one right at t equal to 0 this will be 1 it will be equal to alpha right and then it will uh, go down this way right as t goes to infinity this will go to 0 and uh, then correspondingly see z your failure law uh, rate of failure z t is alpha right which is a constant right and so uh, it continues to be alpha value alpha for all values of t this is your t axis this is your uh, z t axis okay then f t would be of course uh, so what f t would be what 1 minus e raise to minus alpha t right uh, uh, sorry this function right so 1 minus e raise to minus alpha so at t equal to 0 uh, this will be 0 and then as t goes to infinity this goes to 0 so the function uh, finally um, uh, goes up to 1 okay and then your um, rt the failure function or oh, sorry the reliability function yes <laughs> Uh, the reliability function r t which is 1 minus f t and therefore, this is equal to e raise to minus alpha t and so here again at t equal to 0 the value will be 1 and then it will go down as t goes to infinity. So, the reliability goes down as um, um, t goes to infinity. Okay. So, uh, this is the um, graph for the uh, p d f of an exponential failure law. So, uh, at t equal to 0 it is equal to alpha and then it goes down to infinity as t goes to infinity. Then we know that the uh, failure rate z t or the hazard function this is a constant right and the va constant value is alpha. Uh, then uh, we the cumulative density function which is f t is equal to 1 minus e raise to minus alpha t would be again at t equal to 0 it will be 0 because this will be 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0 and then it goes up to 1. Um, the uh, reliability function would be uh, e raise to minus alpha t. So, at t equal to 0 this will be 1 and then again it goes down to infinity. Okay. So, this these are the four uh, uh, graphs that uh, you or the four functions that you relate with the exponential law and you have a picture of the uh, all four of them. Okay. Now, let us look at this example. Uh, if the parameter alpha is given and uh, reliability is also given that means uh, rt is specified we can find t so that means given alpha that means you have specified the uh, failure law and then you are asking for uh, a certain level of reliability so you want to know uh, what would be the uh, time required for the uh, equipment or the component to operate to achieve that reliability right so the number of hours of operation required for the specified reliability level I should say. Okay. Now, let alpha be 0 0.01 and reliability is uh, 0 0.9. So, you want this to be uh, obtained and uh, your parameter is 0 0.01. So, if uh, alpha is 0 0.01 then your uh, uh, mean, mean will be what? Uh, so, uh, for exponential distribution the mean is, so expected t would be 1 by alpha which is 1 upon 0 0.01 which is 100 hours. So, if you are talking if your unit of time is hours then this is 100 hours. Okay. So, now so therefore, uh, the number of hours that are required is given by to, uh, to achieve this uh, reliability level then you are saying that e raise to minus 0 0.01 t remember this is the function reliability function. So, e raise to minus 0 0.01 t should be equal to 0 0.9. So, you want that value of t which will satisfy this equation. So, you take log of both sides and this will then give you minus 0 0.01 t is equal to ln of 0 0.9 and remember uh, ln of um, a number less than 1 is negative. So, therefore, uh, this is ok. So, there is a minus sign here right and so um, if you now divide by 0 0.01 then you get that t is equal to 100 into ln of 0 0.9 okay which comes out to be if you look up the values of ln 0 0.9 then uh, multiplied by 100 that gives you 10.54 hours so therefore the way you can interpret this is that out of 100 components 
if all are working simultaneously. And 90, uh, what we are saying is, and if they all operate for 10.54 hours, then our expectation is that 90 of them will not fail. So, after 10.54 hours, 90 of them will be working. So, this is what we mean by uh, the reliability level and so on. So, therefore, um, you know, so essentially it is a question of given what and then what you can compute. So, uh, sometimes you may be given the time, then you can compute the reliability level, right. So, if you are given t, then you will be able to determine this number and if you are given this reliability level, then you can uh, determine the time or if you are given time and reliability, then you can determine the parameter that means, you can uniquely uh, uh, determine the uh, exponential failure law, because you only need the parameter alpha to determine the uh, failure law, exponential failure law. Okay, let us look at another example. So, here you are given the cos c in terms of uh, mu. So, c is 3 mu square be the cost of producing an item, where mu is the mean time to failure. So, again we are talking of a exponential uh, distribution, exponential failure law and mu, mu is the mean. So, therefore, if mu is the mean, then remember the distribution, the failure law would be minus 1 by mu t, right. This is what you have. Okay. Now, so, so the cost is uh, uh, 3 times mu square. So, which means that if mu is small, then the cost is small. If mu is large, then your uh, cost would be uh, accordingly uh, large, right. Okay which makes sense. So, maybe because if your mean time to failure is small, then you expect that uh, the cost is also small and if uh, the mean time to failure is big, is large number, then that means uh, you expect the component not to fail uh, very early or has a long lifetime and in that case the cost of producing that item would be also high. So, uh, it is reasonable to assume the cost in this way, right. Now, suppose rupees d are earned for every hour the item is in service. So, you earn a profit of d rupees uh, for per, per hour when the item is uh, functional. Okay. Now, you want, so therefore, profit per item is given by the profit would be d into t, if, if the lifetime is t hours, then d into t minus the cost 3 mu square right? and t is the number of service hours. Right? So, so, find the value of mu for which the profit is maximized. So, expected profit. So, certainly because this is a random variable. So, we will um, uh, uh, maximize the expected profit. So, the expected profit is this, right, because d of e t, this is a, con I mean this is not a random variable, this would be some fixed number. Uh, so, then d of e t minus 3 mu square and e t is mu. So, therefore, d mu minus 3 mu square. So, exactly what I was saying that, yeah. So, this is uh, so, therefore, to maximize this expected profit, I would uh, differentiate this with respect to mu, this is a function of mu and put it to 0. So, that gives me uh, d minus 6 mu equal to 0, uh, which, is, which implies that mu is d by 6. And of course, uh, only critical value and uh, if, but still you need to verify that d square by d mu square is uh, of the uh, function is uh, minus 6, which is less than 0. So, therefore, the critical point is a point of maxima. So, the value that we get of mu here is a value which maximizes the expected profit. Okay. So, therefore, u mu equal to d by 6 is maximizing the profit and the maximum profit is d square by 12 um, rupees. Okay. So, uh, uh, just trying to give you a feeling for uh, uh, for the uh, failure law, exponential failure law and the kind of problems that uh, can be, you know, uh, discussed and that arise uh, corresponding to this. Uh, so, again the level is at a very basic, uh, you know, uh, the level I have kept is very basic, because this is just trying to uh, give you a glimpse of uh, how these uh, probability tools that we have learnt uh, can be used for answering so many uh, questions about day to day operations of uh, you know systems service systems and so on so this is the whole idea right otherwise reliability theory has become very complex and in fact the next uh, next failure law that we will discuss is a complex one and uh, we again we'll just try to understand the basics of that uh, of the viable viable uh, uh, failure law 
So, let us now, I will talk about the viable uh, failure law and you can see that now the degree of complexity is going up and okay, we have not so far discussed this uh, distribution probability law also. So, let us look at it and uh, the idea here is to, uh, because the um, uh, constant failure uh, rate uh, was only applicable to a special kind of uh, uh, components, which, uh, which were, uh, which were uh, not, uh, uh, let us say, for which there was no wearing out effect, right. So, that was a special uh, situation. And, uh, and we have seen that there are uh, so many al almost electronic devices uh, are you know uh, behave that way and so uh, the exponential law is appropriate for them. So, now if we want to modify this constant rate, then uh, uh, the variable failure law was thought of and this is alpha beta t, t raise to beta minus 1. So, now you have introduced uh, uh, power of t of the time and of course, uh, two parameters and there can be more than two also. So, we are talking of a two parameter viable failure law and uh, so here alpha and beta are positive and t is uh, greater than 0 as usual, because it is the uh, time, lifetime uh, 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 variable. So, therefore, um, has to be non-negative. Now, um, you can look at, I have drawn uh, various uh, uh, pictures of uh, z t when for the values of uh, beta and uh, different values of alpha and beta. And uh, uh, so, maybe we will just look at it. Let me just first compute your f t. So, remember we said that we can compute f t uniquely given the uh, failure um, rate function. So, z t. So, then this is z t e raise to minus uh, uh, integral of 0 to t of z s d s. Integral 0 to t of z s d s. Right? This is our uh, formula for computing f t given z t. So, then here if you substitute for z t, this is alpha beta into t raise to beta minus 1 e raise to minus integral 0 to t alpha beta s raise to beta minus 1 d s. Right? So, if you just uh, look at this integral, let us just compute. Uh, so, this will be s raise to beta minus 1 d s from 0 to t and the integral here is 1 by beta s raise to beta 0 to t. So, therefore, this is 1 by beta t raise to beta. So, if I make that substitution here, I get my uh, f t as this. So, this is the p d f connected with the variable failure law and uh, the failure law is uh, specified there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the way it uh, looks, uh, it is a little complicated, but just see when you put alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 1, uh, alpha equal to 1, beta equal to 1, then this is 1 and this will be e raise to minus t. So, e raise to minus t would be your, uh, yeah. So, this would be your p d f, right, the exponential with parameter 1 and that is the one I have drawn here, right. Then, uh, if you look at uh, the value alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 2. So, therefore, in this case, the, uh, the um, uh, for beta equal to 1, this will be uh, uh, exponential and the uh, failure rate will be constant, which will be 1. So, um, uh, beta, of course, here I have drawn it only for beta equal to 1. So, alpha is as it is this one is of course, you put alpha equal to 1 also. So, anyway, this is your uh, function for the failure rate. Okay. Then, uh, when you put alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 2, then I have drawn this one. This is the one for beta equal to 2. Of course, um, not a very accurate, uh, very not very accurate figures. So, you can always Google search and then you can find nice pictures, uh, very accurately drawn graphs. Okay. So, beta equal to 2, now you look at uh, this thing here, this is um, alpha 1 beta equal to 2. So, this is um, uh, twice t, that means it is a linear function of t. So, the, uh, so the, therefore, you see uh, for different values of beta, things are changing. So, if, uh, alpha equal to 1 beta equal to 1, you got constant, alpha equal to 1 beta equal to 2, you get um, and in fact, any value of alpha, alpha does not have to be 1 then in that case it will be a linear function of t, right. If beta is, uh, uh, beta is 2, right. And so, uh, here of course, I have drawn it for alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 2, the diagram. Then, um, and the corresponding uh, uh, p d f will be 2 t e raise to minus t square. Okay. Then, uh, for uh, beta equal to 3, for example, I have drawn, I have drawn the picture here also for beta equal to 3. So, then this starts 
taking a bit more bell shape and beta equal to 3 uh, alpha equal to 1 will be 3 times t square. So, that will be uh, that means, z t is a quadratic function of t okay. and uh, correspondingly your uh, uh, this thing will be. Uh, so, here when beta is 3 then of course, this is t square and then e raise to something right. So, uh, uh, quadratic into exponential function. Now, uh, and for beta equal to 5 for example, it will become more steep like this and then as, as beta goes to infinity you see you can show that it will simply be a spike you know just a spike uh, because uh, beta is going to infinity uh, sorry I mean yeah if beta is going to infinity then this will simply just spike into uh, this thing which will which you call as a delta function. So, at the at the point uh, um, yeah so uh, somewhere here it will become a spike as beta goes to infinity. Yeah, so, the, the thing becomes narrower and narrower as your beta goes up. So, here beta is a shape parameter therefore, you see beta is a shape parameter and 1 by alpha is the scale parameter. So, why you scale the whole thing right. That means, when you are drawing the thing then you. So, failure rate is proportional to power of uh, power beta minus 1 of t. So, therefore, this is the uh, generalization that we have made to the uh, constant failure uh, rate. And so, this is uh, the failure rate is now proportional to t raise to beta minus 1. Okay. So, you can see that um, yeah and then uh, this also gives you uh, good feeling. Uh, now, for example, if your uh, beta is less than 1, if beta is less than 1, then uh, this will become negative. So, t will be in the denominator uh, and so alpha beta upon t raise to 1 minus beta and that will be uh, for um, as t goes to infinity. Uh, so, the denominator will go to 0 and therefore, this will uh, uh, let, let me. So, okay. alpha beta upon t raise to 1 minus beta. Right. So, as t goes to 0, this goes to infinity uh, the denominator t, rho, t goes to 0, this goes to infinity and so, um, no it should be the other way. I want to show that uh, for beta less than 1, for beta less than 1 this is uh, negative. So, when I take it here it will be positive, this power is positive and so as uh, yes as t goes to 0 this goes to infinity, because this goes to 0. So, this goes to infinity as t goes to 0 right. Yeah, this would be and therefore, uh, it is this way and then as t goes to infinity this goes to 0. Okay. And so, failure rate decreases with time. Now, failure rate decreases with time that means, see essentially defective items um, fail early and the failure rate decreases over time as the defective items have been weeded out. So, all the defective items have been weeded out from the population. So, that case uh, the failure rate will decrease with time. right? So, all defective items fail early and therefore, as time progresses your failure rate will decrease. So, this is the situation that gets modeled when you are uh, by uh, putting beta equal to less than 1. So, all values of uh, beta between 0 and this thing here. All right. So, if you take this then this is the situation it will suppose to model and beta equal to 1 we have already discussed thoroughly. Now, here of course, um, uh, since the um, uh, failure rate is constant. So, as time goes on the failure rate does not change. So, this is because random external events are causing the failure. That could be one of the reason. So, random external for example, if a fuse, a uh, fuse will blow out if the um, high current comes suddenly in the line. right? So, therefore, that is an external event and many others can be explained high wind and so on for other you know ten high tension wires you can snap and so on. So, therefore, um, uh, beta equal to 1 uh, because the failure rate is constant it is understood that uh, external events would cause the failure uh, could be the reason for the failure. And for beta greater than 1 as we have seen failure rate is increasing with time and therefore, this models the uh, situation where aging process has a role to play in the failure of the system okay. and that is uh, parts are likely to fail as time goes on and this is when the stress part. So, you see um, uh, you, this certainly captures it is a more complex and little more comprehensive uh, failure law, 
which uh, uh, captures more than one situation okay and uh, uh, you know you can play around by manipulating the value of beta and alpha and uh, try to get uh, accurate results so this is the whole idea and we'll continue with the uh, discussion on uh, variable distributions so let us make this uh, computations about the expected value and the uh, variance of a variable distribution so uh, E t, the theorem says that E t is alpha raised to minus 1 by beta, gamma of 1 by beta plus 1. So, we all know the gamma function and then V t, the variance would be alpha raised to minus 2 by beta, gamma of 2 beta plus 1 minus gamma of 1 beta plus 1 whole square, right, which is we are using the formula that uh, variance is E t square minus uh, expected value of t square minus expected t whole square. right. Now, uh, so just apply the, because we have already computed the f t, uh, the p d f for t, when t has a uh, variable uh, failure law, uh, then this is uh, t into alpha beta t raise to beta minus 1, e raise to minus alpha into t beta d t, right. Okay. So, um, yes. So, now you can see that uh, this t beta minus 1 and t beta. So, this prompts you to make the substitution that uh, t beta is y. Yeah. So, we will do this. So, again you are all familiar with this part of the calculus. You can do this integration. So, t raise to beta is y. That will make beta t raise to beta minus 1 d t is equal to d y. The limits will not change. They will remain from 0 to infinity. Okay. Since, beta is positive. So, uh, for t equal to infinity, uh, y will also be infinity and t 0, y 0. Okay. So, now therefore, this thing, whole thing gets replaced by d y. So, you have a beta t beta minus 1 and d t. So, this we will replace by d y. Then you are left with a t and an alpha and then e raise to minus alpha y because t raise to beta is y. So, therefore, this is what you have alpha e raise to minus alpha y and y raise to 1 by beta and there is a um, uh, yeah. So, y raise to 1 by beta because you, are, you have a t here. So, t will be y raise to 1 by beta. Okay. So, therefore, this is what you have. Now, you see this looks familiar because you can now relate this with the gamma function, gamma p d f. So, here um, alpha e raise to minus alpha y, then you have to have alpha y here as the variable. So, alpha y raise to 1 by beta. Now, y 1 by beta is there. So, alpha 1 by beta I am you know, adding here. So, therefore, I will divide by alpha 1 by beta and then I need a gamma of 1 by beta plus 1 for this integral the d y to be 1 because this is the p d f of a gamma distribution with parameters alpha and 1 by beta. Um, so, then uh, we I am left with this and this finally. So, therefore, uh, the expected value of the random variable t, where t is has a uh, variable uh, failure law is uh, given by gamma of 1 by beta plus 1 into alpha raise to minus uh, 1 by beta. Right. Okay. And then the second part uh, should be straightforward. So, you have this. So, therefore, I need to compute expected value of t square and so that will be t square alpha beta t raise to beta minus 1. So, now you see um, you are again beta t raise to beta minus 1 and e raise to uh, uh, t raise to beta would become uh, this thing. Uh, yeah, I am sorry. I mean beta t raise to beta minus 1 d t that will be d y from here. Right and then you have a t square. So, that will be uh, y raise to, uh, I mean I have not written the integral here. So, anyway this will, uh, this will re reduce, this will be equal to 0 to, inf why have I written t, this is 0 to infinity, yeah this will be 0 to infinity. So, y raise to 2 by beta and then you have an alpha and then uh, you have e raise to minus alpha y d y. Right. And so, here again I will do the same trick that I did here. So, alpha e raise to minus alpha y is there. Then this you need to write this uh, 0 to infinity alpha y raise to 2 by beta alpha e raise to minus alpha y right. is exactly the same thing. And then you will divide by alpha raise to 2 by beta. Then you need a 2 by beta plus 1 right? and you will multiply by 2 raise to beta by gamma of 2 beta plus 1. 2 by beta plus 1 and so this whole thing will be uh, and there is a d y 
right. So, then you will be left with gamma of 2 by beta plus 1 into alpha raise to minus 2 by beta. So, this is the expected value of t square right and therefore, the variance will be this minus the expected t whole square. So, you take out uh, alpha raise to minus 2 by beta common and then you are left with this. So, this is just for your now and the, here again we could make use of the uh, gamma distribution computations to compute the um, expected value and the variance. Now, um, again, so we have seen that variable distribution represents an appropriate model for a failure law whenever the system is composed of a number of components, right? Okay, and the failure is primarily due to the most severe flaw among a large number of flaws in the system. So this is what is happening. So you have lot of components and a lot of parts in the uh, uh, device that you are using and each one of them has a flaw, but then it will be governed by the uh, uh, most severe flaw uh, among all the components. Uh, this is what uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know you can say that this is the representation of a uh, this is a situation but which a viable distribution will represent and your alpha beta and of course you have seen that uh, you know by uh, changing the values of beta you can either have a increasing failure rate or a constant failure rate or a decreasing failure rate. So, this we have already seen right and um, yeah. So, here you know uh, just being able to give you a you know short glimpse into the uh, how what uh, this distribution can do and one needs to really work at a lot of uh, examples to understand the uh, implications or the importance of this distribution. Okay. Now, let us just look at this example. Uh, so, each of the six tubes of a radio set uh, has a life length in years. So, our time unit is a year, which may be considered a random variable. Okay. So, the uh, lifetime of a, a radio a tube in a radio set um, uh, um, uh, in number of years uh, should be, con uh, be considered as a random variable. Suppose, these tubes function independently of each other. Okay. So, that is important they are working independently of each other. What is the probability that no tube will have to be replaced during the first two months of service? Okay. So, we will have to uh, you know translate this to years, because uh, the our unit of time is uh, in years. Now, the uh, p pdf of the failure time to failure uh, is given by this 50 into t e raise to minus 25 t square. So, immediately uh, you can recognize that this is a variable distribution and since t uh, has power 1. So, your beta is 2, right. This is uh, beta is equal to 2 because t raise to beta minus 1. So, therefore, if beta is 2, then alpha is and of course, from here alpha is 25. So, this is alpha beta, alpha beta into t raise to beta minus 1 e raise to minus 25 t square because this is beta. So, this is a variable distribution, right. Now, of course, we have not made this computation of the for the for the viable distribution, but uh, certainly you can do it, or maybe you can use numerical methods. So essentially, um, yeah, it's a viable distribution with these are the parameters. Then you, since the um, uh, tubes are functioning independent of each other, and you don't want, uh, and of course, uh, let me say that your t is one by uh, uh, this is two months, so one by six which I have written, okay, I have written it here, right. So, t is 1 by 6, you want to your capital T, right. So, um, yeah, so we uh, we want, there are 6 tubes, they are working independently of each other, we do not want any one of them to fail. So, therefore, uh, in the first 2 months. So, the probability of let us say the first tube not failing in the first 2 months is t 1 greater than or equal to 1 by 6. So, because your time unit is 1 by 6. And then, uh, since all of them are independent of each other, we do not want uh, any of them to fail. So, then this would be uh, uh, probability uh, t 1 greater than or equal to 1 by 6 raise to 6. So, this we will, uh, you know, you this is not a difficult integral. Again, you know, because see you have seen my computations here for E t and variance t. So, uh, you can just use those, you can use the gamma uh, distribution computations to do the computations here and then you can uh, find out this probability raise it to 6. So, the answer is approximately 0 0.5 raise to 6. Okay. So, this integral you can handle now since I have given you the uh, method of uh, computing E t. So, so, exactly it, it just uh, boils down to that uh, for different values of t and so on. Right. Okay.
Okay. So, um, now this does not exhaust uh, the uh, failure laws. I have only, as I told you, and I have been repeating it, that we are only uh, considering uh, very basic failure laws here. And my, of course, uh, aim was to, since we have discussed uh, the probability theory and uh, so the various tools you have learnt about. So, I just thought that I would like to show you the uh, various applications also of these tools that we have learned in the course. So, that has been the whole, uh, uh, you know, whole idea uh, theme across the course that you learn the theory and then you learn to use it also. And so, uh, 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 Markov processes, discrete Markov processes, uh, then uh, we will, we have talked about uh, continuous Markov processes and in, in the process uh, special cases which are Poisson and exponential uh, uh, distributions and then birth and death processes and finally, uh, applications to reliability theory. And here also, um, the um, basic concepts have been given to you, but uh, as I said, it is a very growing, large growing area, very important and uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, applications of uh, course probability theory. And there are many more people have come up with failure laws, which probably supplement the um, theory that has been discussed here. Okay.